Ah, welcome everybody. Yes, it is Sunday. It's time now for another edition of our Coffee with Conti Corvette vlog. I appreciate you stopping by, checking in, and really the whole essence of my Sunday vlog was to have kind of a relaxed atmosphere, just a conversational atmosphere, and that's kind of what we're going to do today. I got a lot of articles here, a couple of different things I want to share with you. Some of it is going to just blow your mind. It'll generate conversations amongst your household, within the Corvette Club, within comments down below here on the YouTube channel, and I'm looking forward to that. So thank you again for being here on our Coffee with Conti every Sunday right here on this Corvette-only YouTube channel. So on today's show, I do appreciate the opportunity to have that conversation with you guys. I think as soon as starting tomorrow, I'll be putting up a vlog every day, some of them very short, but every day leading up to 7, 18, 19, and the launch of the historic C8 2020 mid-engine Corvette. So make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and CorvetteConti.com so you don't miss those uploads. Also on today's show, what I think the hidden meaning is to the letters LHD. I'm always thinking, and this one, I think, again, I'm on the right track. We'll talk about that in just a bit. And I'm going to share with you the radio interview. I was on Gary Master Donato's Mastering Your Money show, talking with he and Mike about Corvette, was a great honor and an absolute blast. That clip is also coming up for you today. But first, let's address the thumbnail that may have generated you to click this video. Ah! That's John in Michigan. I saw that on Facebook and it just cracked me up. He was freaking out because Cindy was about to drive his car. I guess it reminded me of that vlog we did a couple of months ago where the guy bought the car, but then all of a sudden he changed his mind back out of the deal because his wife of 27 years was going to throw him out of the house. And we went on on that one and said, ladies, you need to support your guy. This one maybe kind of spin doctor that a bit, seeing John having fun and freaking out. Ah! But this message is for the guys. First, we have to get our Dr. Phil forehead on. Now guys, remember, as much as you want the support from her for the Corvette hobby, you need to extend the same courtesy. And remember, this is not my car, this is our car. Yeah, throw her the keys, take it out for a ride, grab your girlfriends, go shop and go for a lunch. She'll be back. And then what you need to do, and remember this, is go together. Go on those cruises, go on those trips, go to those car shows. You meet new people, you travel places you never would go, but you're doing it in your Corvette. Have a blast, okay? All right, that's enough of the Dr. Phil forehead. Ken, thanks for the picture, by the way. I think it was a good point because I don't think many realize the great camaraderie that the Corvette community brings. Get out there, be a part of it, enjoy the company, enjoy the new friendships, and enjoy your Corvette. I really appreciate all the comments you folks make on the channel, the texts, the emails. Uh, here's a request from someone, I apologize, I didn't write down who it was from, but thank you for sending it in. It says, hey Rick, can you do me a favor on the vlog? It's a request that I'm sure a lot of us viewers would like to know. Even if you didn't buy a C7 yourself right now, can you do a detailed vlog about if you were to buy one, what exact trim and options you would get? Just curious to see your vision of a C7, if you would order one yourself. I think we all would like to hear your passion and reasoning for all the options that you would choose. Thanks for taking my video request into consideration. Hey, thank you. Thanks for watching the channel. I really do appreciate that support. All right, coming up in just a second, I'm gonna read part of these articles and feedback and reaction from Bob Lutz. One's actually pretty bizarre. It's almost like Orson Welles, War of the World stuff. <laughs> I'll tell you that in just a second. All right, as I mentioned, I stumbled across something. It was on a build sheet. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Can you see the highlighted LHD? Okay, that designates this is on a Corvette build sheet, 2019. It says left-hand drive. Here's my deductive reasoning, my thought process. Why would you have to note and designate left-hand drive unless there was going to be right-hand drive? Now, we talked, about, we talked about this a long time ago, but of recent, in April, at the bash announcement when General Motors announced, hey, there's going to be a second shift for Corvette at Bowling Green Assembly, 400 new jobs. That's really cool, but... Who are you making all these cars for? So my thought was, yes, they're gonna do more probably overseas stuff, but I was told, I think it was like eight, nine years ago, a guy was telling me about C8 coming to be, he's since retired, but he also said, hey, there's gonna be a right-hand drive C8 car 
Is that is that really going to happen? And you know what? And if it does happen, I don't care. As long as it doesn't affect us as far as what we need here in the United States and it keeps the brand healthy, hey, build away, boys. That's fantastic. I mean, it's kind of weird driving over here. Wouldn't it be kind of weird? I don't know. I guess if you're a mailman, that's okay. <laughs> so that was just, I saw that and I'm like, it's, it's got to mean something. There would be no reason to put an LHD on there unless there's going to be an RHD. You know what I mean? All right. All right, this article is going to blow your mind and certainly generate some conversation. Pete in Michigan, thanks for sending this to me. It's an interview Automotive News did with Bob Lutz. Starts off saying, kiss the good times goodbye. Everyone will have five years to get their car off the road or sell it for scrap. Oh my gosh, listen to this. Again, this is the Orson Welles stuff I was telling you about earlier. Listen to this. Bob goes on in the article to say, it saddens me, but we are approaching the end of the automotive era. The auto industry is on an accelerating change curve. For hundreds of years, horse was the primary mover of humans, and for the past 120 years, it's been the automobile. Now we are approaching the end of the line for the automobile because travel will be in standardized modules. The end state will be the fully autonomous module with no capability of the driver to exercise command. You will call for it, it'll arrive at your location, you'll get in, input your destination, and go onto the freeway. Onto the freeway, it will merge seamlessly into a stream of other modules traveling at 120 to 150 miles an hour. Then as you approach your exit, your module will enter the deceleration lanes, exit and go to the final destination. You'll be billed for the transportation, you'll enter your credit card number or thumbprint, whatever it is at that time. The module will take off and go to its collection point, ready for the next person to call. Most of these standardized modules will be purchased and owned by Ubers and Lyfts and God knows what other companies that will enter the transportation business in the future, Bob says. A minority of individuals may elect to have personalized modules sitting at their home so they can leave their vacation stuff and kids' soccer gear in them. They'll still want that convenience. The vehicles, however, will no longer be driven by humans because in 15 to 20 years at the latest, human-driven vehicles will be legislated off the highways. The automotive sport, as far as using cars for fun as we know it, well, that'll survive. It just won't be on public highways. Ah, how about that? A little crazy, a little freaky. Let the conversation ensue. Looking forward to your comments down below about that topic. Bob Lutz in the future of the automotive industry and transportation. Oh, my gosh. Now, speaking of the future, and Bob Lutz again, talking about the future of Corvette. And I've talked about this 10 to 12 years ago and darn near laughed off the internet and we even said it of recent and I still believe it in my heart if we're looking for the future of Corvette the diversity of Corvette I mean do we survive years and years and years is just a two-seater good-looking performing sports car I think not I think doing a Corvette sport utility vehicle makes a lot of sense and this is this is not just for folks that live in the colder climates and talking about snow this is talking about the prestige people mover, family vehicle. Yes, when you're not driving the two-seater car with you and your significant other, the sport, utility, Corvette-inspired vehicle is cool. It makes sense for our future. Recent article from Bob Lutz comments in that talking about this very subject. Bob says, if I were still at GM, what I would do is develop a dedicated architecture, super lightweight, super powerful, Porsche Cayenne-like, only much better and a little bigger. Medium volume Corvette SUV, targeting production worldwide somewhere between 20,000 and 30,000 units and a price starting at $100,000. Gorgeous interior, no V6 powertrain, no low end version. It has to be the stellar premium sport utility vehicle made in the United States. And the Corvette brand could pull that off. And Bob, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think that is the future future of Corvette, yeah. Now in my job, yes, I get to deal with this spectacular car and I meet some wonderful people, a lot of which we share with you right here on the YouTube channel. What I want to share with you right now is something that I was proud to be invited on and that's Gary Masterdonato's radio show, Mastering Your Money. 
You can find this show and other shows on his website at masterswealth.com. Of course, we were talking Corvette. His show is also syndicated on Fox Radio. I appreciate Gary also getting ready to order a 2020 C8 mid-engine Corvette. I had a blast talking with Gary and Mike and what an honor to be on their show. Here's that clip right now. Hi, this is Patrick Kelly, best-selling author of Stress-Free Retirement, and you're listening to Mastering Your Money with Gary Master Donato. Welcome back to Mastering Your Money with Gary Master Donato, the Master's Wealth Management Group. That was a big, big song called Little Red Corvette for Prince back in the day. But the irony is that he wasn't even born when the first Corvette rolled off the assembly line back in 1953. And Gary, you always talk about inflation and how we need to plan for that in retirement. The first model Corvette was less than $3,500. Today, with inflation, 2019 VET starts at about $56,000. Talk about inflation. Well, inflation is, is real and it averages about 3% a year. And going back to that 1953, and we'll bring Rick Corvette County out in just a minute. You're going to love my guest here. Eastern North Carolina, by the way, loves Corvettes and they mm -hmm. love cars. Of course, America's always been America's sports car. Mm -hmm. From the time I was a little boy going into the Chevy dealer with my mom and dad, picking out that new every three-year purchase Impella, I was not even tall enough to see inside the window of the Corvette that they'd have on the showroom floor. But you know, in 1975, when I ordered my first new car, it was a 1975 Corvette convertible, right out of college, ready to hit the road running back at Payne Weber. Mm -hmm. And my first car was $7,500 out the door. Wow. Now the first Corvette was $3,500, a little bit less than that. The $7,500 and now they're at 56,000. So we're gonna have a little fun with that today. And I'm gonna bring to the forefront one of the nation's experts probably the nation's expert in my opinion on the sales side and one of the top corvette salespersons in the u.s i'm sure rick corvette conti has been delivering dreams since 1995 and you can go to rick's website at corvetteconti.com or the youtube channel at rick corvette conti on the YouTube, and you'll see some great video and happy dreams being delivered around the country each and every day. Rick, welcome to the program. Hey, good morning, guys. What a pleasure to be on with you. Thank you. And what a pleasure to listen to your YouTube. You got to go to YouTube if you have an interest in Corvettes and cars at all. Go to YouTube and just Google Rick Corvette Connie, and you can watch his messages all day religiously. He's got the Sunday coffee with Conti. He's got the Tuesday Conti tip. Rick's tips. I know yeah, it all by heart because yep. yeah, I watch you more than I do the the soap operas. My gosh, Thursdays well, there's a new update, and you, then that you watch because oh my, I've been oh selling this car for 24 years, but YouTube I've only been doing for two years, and it's amazing the way that we can connect with the audience and the people that just love this car. There's a ton of people that watch us that don't even own the car, but one day they might. But they love seeing the experiences of the people that are getting this car, things going on in the marketplace. And what a fun way to, to facilitate that through the YouTube channel. I just I just love this car. Love hearing your story from a little kid going into the showroom. That is amazing. And those stories are countless from people that just have that, that attachment. I'll tell you this story real quick, too, about Corvette. So you see that, yes, it's important. And I think with the great things that you and your company does from money management tips, you're making dreams happen. I'm the guy facilitating those dreams as people become successful in their life. But they've all got that story, that, that tie-in to Corvette from when they were a little kid. When David Hill is a previous Corvette engineer, the first time, I love the story he told, first time he saw a Corvette, he was 12 years old playing on the baseball field. When the Corvette drove by, the entire game stopped. Everybody <laughs> walked to the fence to watch the car drive by. It's amazing. <laughs> No, it's it's an amazing it's an amazing automobile that sticks with Americans around the country, and especially in our generation, you know, the baby boomer generation, because yeah. you know when we grew up, it was apple pie, USA, America's sports car. When you say America's sports car, automatically it triggers the word Corvette, and Corvette yeah. has taken so many different from the very first Corvette in 1953. The current models right now they reference the C7. They have different models when they change the model side. But the really cool thing that we want to bring up to your attention, you may have read about it already, but in July, they are announcing the C8, which is the mid-engine Corvette, which we've never had before. It's going to change the whole contour 
of Corvette. What do you know about this C8, Rick? I know a lot more, unfortunately, than I can tell, but let's just talk <laughs> I know about you do, it but in I'm, some uh, positive I, generalities. <laughs> oh, I want you to paint me a radionomics picture of this little car. <laughs> well, I've seen many versions on, on your YouTube. Yes, and it was great that Mike started off the show with Prince's Little Red Corvette. Oh, yeah. The mid-engine car, a great correlation, is and was a dream of Zora Duntoff, who was essentially the father of Corvette, that made the Corvette a sports car. And it's ironic that Zora and Prince both passed away on the same day, April 16th. Wow. So you got wow. two guys that are forever tied to a song and a car, Little Red Corvette. It's amazing. Wow. But as Zora was getting to retire in General Motors, the people that would success him as an engineer, he kept saying, you've got to build mid-engine. You've got to build mid-engine. He's like, please. <laughs> it just kept passing it on and on and on. Forty-some years later, finally it's going to happen. And, yes, we're changing it's a scary change. We're changing the entire complexity of the car. There's no going back. You're going to put the engine in the back, and you're going to go to the future of Corvette for performance. And I just have to entrust being around this car for so long that they're making a decision that is for the betterment and for the continued future of this car. It's going to be incredible. It'll come in a removable hardtop. It'll come in a power retractable convertible. It'd be pretty neat. It's Mastering Your Money with our special guest today, Rick Corvette Conti. He is one of the nation's foremost Corvette authorities, delivering dreams since 1995. You can find out more about Rick on his website at CorvetteConti.com. Also, check out his YouTube channel. Great today because we're talking about America's car, the Corvette, and your dreams, your retirement dreams. You worked hard, and wouldn't it be great to have a Corvette? In retirement. Right now, we're highlighting the new C8 that's due out later this month. There's so mm -hmm. many configurations of what this car may look like. Now, right. I know through a little sound bite that I picked up, a little birdie told you or showed you some pictures that they may have seen from somewhere. And we won't <laughs> ask you, I'm not going to pick your brain on that because I know you're sworn to secrecy and we respect that, yeah. sir. But on July 18th of 2019, at approximately 11 p.m., Eastern time, because the reveal Correct. is going to be at 8 o'clock Pacific time. I think it's going to be in Tustin, California, not far from where I moved from, by the way. I moved here oh, to no Eastern kidding. Carolina from Dana Point, California, and I used to go to Tustin often. We have clients in Tustin, so been there many a time, but it'll be a fun time. So tell us a little bit, what got you involved in the Corvette scenario, and how did you become one of America's number one sellers of Corvettes today in the, in the respect of individuality. I, I never asked you how many cars you sold and it doesn't matter. It's got to be in the thousands, I would imagine by now. I simply don't, you know, rest on that and say, hey, I've sold this many cars because to the next customer, they don't care about that. They want to be focused on themselves. Hey, what can you do for me, Rich? Sure. How can you guide me? How can you assist me? I'm the guy that has the little kid story too. And I remember uh, being a kid, I was probably seven, eight years old and I helped my uncle Jim in Michigan, washes Mach 1 Mustang. I thought it was a big deal washing a car, you know, I was helping wash the car. And he would get frustrated at me, and I never knew why. And he told me years later, as every time his buddy down the street would cruise down in a Corvette, I'd stop washing the Mustang to check out the car, driving down the street. And he says, it's funny to see what you're doing now, because you had a natural love affair for this car, and he goes, you didn't even know what it was. So through changes in life, I've got into the car business and did not care for it. <laughs> and I've talked about this on the YouTube channel, but I really did love cars and I love people and their stories and their passion, especially for Corvette. And I decided that if I was going to be in the car business, I was going to be a specialist and focus on a car. So all I sell is Corvettes for 24 years. And it's a great pleasure. Uh, I've met a lot of new friends and the stories with these customers is just rewarding for me to be a part of it. Hey, right. People have cried buying this car. I mean, you imagine buying a car and if you, and if you don't get that and you don't start to shed a tear yourself, then you're not really connected. And I am, and I get it. And it's so enjoyable to be a part of that. It really is. Rick, this is a great transition. Uh, it's Mike. I want to ask you this question. Gary helps people with their retirements and helps them with the rest of their lives. And that is a magnificent feeling for him. And the, Mm -hmm. Look on the people's faces when they have a plan for retirement is just uh, indescribable. Talk about that feeling when you sell someone, and you touched on it a little bit, but let's further that because this is a big deal. I mean, it's it's America's car. It is America's car. What's that look like when you hand the keys over to somebody and this is a car that they've been wanting to own most of their lives? What's that look like for them? Well, I tell you, it's, and I don't mean to water it down, but my gosh, I've been so fortunate to be a part of many 
first time ever Corvette purchases. And that is just a magnificent feeling for myself. I mean, it's just, <laughs> I can't even describe it. But when I hand them the keys and, and that look in their eyes and the smile on their face, sometimes there's a little shake, there's a little nervousness. I mean, it is really amazing. And I had, and this ties into what you do as well, Gary. I had a gentleman that was getting ready to reward his wife with a new Corvette for their 50th wedding anniversary. And he was just him hawing around. We went through, specked out the car, ordered the car. And I told him how much the car's going to cost. And he's just like, oh, that's so much money. Oh, so much money. I'm so nervous. And he was in the 70s. And I looked at him and I said, Ray, this is what you've been saving for. <laughs> what do you, reward yourself. This is, you've done great. Congratulations. He goes, you know what? That's what my investment guy said. He goes, just write the check <laughs> and get the car for your wife. And we surprised her at one of our car shows. We took the cover off the car, and she didn't know what was going on. And he was on his knee, and he talked about what a wonderful life they've had together and their kids and their grandkids. And there wasn't a dry eye in the place. And he was so glad that he spent that money. He would have spent double that just to have that experience. Wow. Well, it's a wonderful picture that you can watch on Rick's YouTube vlog because he delivers cars all over the U.S., both in person and puts them on a truck, and the transport truck, and gets them over to the people as well. So people all over the U.S. buy cars from Rick, from Seattle, Washington to Maine. And bear in mind, he's right outside Columbus, Ohio. So Thank people you. drive a long way. I've seen people drive from Florida, from, you probably know further, obviously better than I, how far <laughs> they've driven to see you, but but they'll drive that yeah. car back. And uh, he always gives them a little pat on the back of the car as a send-off, which is his unique signature when, when he delivers an automobile. But, you know, yeah. tying this in and then kind of wrapping this up for today, Rick delivers dreams to people. Their dream is, is having this automobile. We deliver dreams to people in a little bit different way. We deliver their retirement dreams on the distribution end of the game. And, you know, they do tie in, Rick, because of this. We can provide the money that they need to buy the dream that they might want which one of those dreams may be a new Corvette, maybe a mid-engine Corvette or something else Correct. or a travel trip to a grandchild or whatever their dream is. We provide reoccurring income that they can't outlive. And those reoccurring incomes can pay for the Corvettes and the travel and all the things that they need to do, but they got to keep their money safe. You know, it's interesting because income at the end of the day is more important than savings. When clients come into the office, and they show a nice large IRA account where they're just retiring and they come to us and go, here, here's a million dollars in my retirement plan. What do we do now? This has to last a lifetime. Well, the back end of the picture is this. We don't know how long they're going to live. When we're planning for retirement, we know how long they're going to live. Right. And then all the adversities that can happen along the way. But we want people to live their dreams as early as they can. And one of those dreams may be a new Corvette or a pre-owned Corvette in their driveway. So... We're here talking with Rick Corvette Conti. That's CorvetteConti.com or go to his YouTube channel. The YouTube channel yeah. where we, we have a lot of fun. And you know my one of my fun slogans around this car because it is so it gives you so much pride owning it because you've accomplished something when you get to that point in your life. So it's wonderful for me to be a part of that. And I like to tell everybody, stop dreaming, start driving. Exactly, man. Stop dreaming and start living your lives and start using your retirement money in the proper way as well, because you've got yeah. money that's sitting there and you're always saving that money for what if, for the what if. Well, the what ifs mm -hmm. are now, because if you don't spend the money, you're going to pass on and your children will buy that new Corvette and your children will go <laughs> on those on those dream trips. You can do them yeah. with the right planning. Your children can do them as well. So Rick Corvette, Connie, always a pleasure. We'll have you on the air again because you are a delight and pleasure. And maybe you and I could spin a little radio show together one day and talk just about Corvettes, sir. Oh, I'd love to do that. I'm actually getting ready to start a, a side Corvette radio show that's going to you know, just cater to Corvette people and their enjoyment, their lifestyle, playing their music, promoting their, their car shows and cars and coffee. And it, why not? You know, yeah, I would love it, yeah. Gary. That'd be great. Well, Rick Corvette, Connie, an absolute pleasure to have you on the Master Your Money program. And we'll have you on again. Folks, I hope you enjoyed today's Coffee with Conti show. I really do appreciate you being here. Make sure you subscribe to this channel because things are about to really heat up. So we're about to launch and reveal the future of Corvette with the C8 2020 mid-engine car. Yeah, 7, 18, 19. Bam, bam, bam. 7, 18, 19. Don't forget, I want your reaction clips. 10 to 20 seconds. The night of the reveal. 
after the car's revealed, what are, hey, Rick, this is what we think of the car, and this, and this, and this, and this, anything, everything, I want you to send it immediately so I can put that compilation vlog together for you on 7 18 19, all right? If I gotta be up all night to do it, I'm happy to do it, but please send your reaction clips, text them, email them right away what you think, what you're feeling about the future of Corvette that is going to be revealed in Tustin, California. Oh, before we go, I want to remind you about a couple of shows here at Ohio, one that I'll be attending and vlogging for you guys. It's Corvette Cleveland's annual Corvettes at Courses show the last Sunday of this month on July 28th in Berea, Ohio. If you're in driving distance, join us. That's a fantastic show. A couple other shows I want to remind you about. Uh, these are clubs that we sponsor here at Coughlin. This one from the Southern Ohio Corvette Club. This will be held on Saturday, July 27th at the Adena Mansion in Chillicothe, Ohio. This is an all-vehicle car show. They do a fantastic job. If you need more information, contact Ed Freeman at 740-466-9870. Another club we sponsor here at Coughlin Corvette is the Street Elite Corvette Club here in Columbus. They're gonna have their 20th annual charitable open car show. All cars invited, charity benefit going to Wounded Warrior Project. This is going to be held at the Big Walnut Grill in Sunbury, Ohio. If you need more information, contact Cindy Fry at 614-570-2396. Well, guys, what I tell you? Lots of conversation pieces in today's video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it. I appreciate you being here. We're talking LHD versus RHD. Are we on the right track? Yeah, I think so. And then Bob Lutz talking about those future module transportation things. I'm not even digging that. Corvette SUV? Yeah, I think, I think it makes sense. Looking forward to seeing your comments down below, as we mentioned before. I really appreciate that participation. It makes it so enjoyable to do these vlogs and have you guys interact with us and interact with each other right here on the channel. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you sooner than you think.